We welcome you into week three of the Ken Sparks Show as Carson Newman picks up a big 55-42 road victory over the Brevard Tornadoes. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Ken Sparks. Ken, uh, a wondrous offensive performance. It seemed like everything went right for your Eagles in the first half while the defense started to iron out some wrinkles, still some issues there. How do you evaluate that 55-42 win over the Tornadoes? Well, it was a lot more encouragement, encouraging than last week uh, in the fact that uh, we had good effort. Um, we, uh, we had guys that were at least uh, trying to get where they're supposed to get to. Uh, and we uh, had great improvement in the kicking game. Uh, we uh, played... Uh, uh, Seemed like when the defense went out and did something, the offense went and take a, took advantage of it. So all those things were very good, and we <clears throat> we had a whole lot less doubts, pouts, shortcuts, and excuses. And uh, doubts and pouts are are bad, you know. And usually they come from because you're not doing it the way you're supposed to do it. But shortcuts and excuses are inexcusable. Uh, it just means that. Uh, you're trying to uh, – you're not doing it right and it's somebody else's – you're not willing to take accountability for it. And then it's hard, uh, hard to develop a team with, with that kind of a mindset. And so this week was so exhilarating to me personally. I heard none of that. Uh, it was uh, – it was a very positive sideline. It's a positive uh, locker room. Um, we had fun playing, even though we still played. Uh, we still shot ourselves several times. Uh, it was unusual how defensively we'd be in a position to make a play, and we just would faint and not make the play, and it cost us a touchdown. On the offense, uh, uh, we would f make a mistake and somehow another it would turn into something good. And uh, like fumbling into the end zone, you know. And or on the same drive, fumbling a snap and yes. DeAndre Thomas picks it up and fires a 15-yard completion to yeah. Anthony Eubanks. Yes, which you wonder, you know, it's a run and play. How come there wasn't anybody downfield? You know, and, but anyway, that's, that's exactly right. Uh, um, Seemed like when we made a mistake offensively, it turned into good news. Made a mistake defensively, it turned into bad news. And we got to get to the point to where everything's good news. When we come back on the Ken Sparks Show, we'll break down the first half. It started with a bang. Find out how after this. Back on the Ken Sparks Show as the Eagles pick up a 55-42 victory over the Brevard Tornadoes. Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head coach Ken Sparks. Ken Hang 40 points on the Tornadoes in the first half, and man, did it start quick. 15 seconds in the game, Lonnie Williams goes to the house on a 100-yard kickoff return. Uh, first time somebody's brought one back uh, for a touchdown since uh, your last two, Tyron Douglas in 11 and Buck Wakefield in 2009. What did that do to energize your team out of the gate? Well, it, it was an explosion on our sideline, and uh, we uh, had – we spent – a lot of time on kicking game this week and uh, to see some results from it right off the bat was exhilarating and uh, I think uh, I think it raised our level right off the bat and gave us some confidence that maybe all this work we're doing is working you know and uh, so uh, uh, it's worth it you know and it's paying off and so uh, and it paid off our, our kicking game was uh, was pretty outstanding, except for a penalty or two or three. Uh, outside of that, it was pretty good. On the flip side, too, kick coverage yes. vastly improved, especially against a talented return man in Brevard's Andre Overholt. Yes. Uh, Brevard's average starting field position after kickoffs, the 21. Does it get any better than that? Don't get any better than that. And uh, I, I thought it was interesting in the locker room after the ball game that uh, uh, they made Coach Reves take a bow. You know, he's in charge of the kickoff uh, coverage. And uh, 
because he, I mean, he was uh, he was on a roll this week, and uh, and uh, the kids really responded, and he he uh, put them in a position to make plays, and they did a great job, and so. It was uh, it was fun to watch. Aside from the kickoff return, I mean, so many good offensive moments in that first half. Is there another one that stands out to you? Well, um, I think uh, uh, when uh, Treshawn took the little swing pass and and all at once he's in the end zone, and I, and I say all at once because that's how fast it happened. Uh, he can run and. Uh, and he knows how to find the end zone, and that I thought that was huge at that time, at that particular time. And, but uh, and one time, Randall on a third and uh, loan uh, just kept rambling until he got the first down. You know, he refused to go down, and and it was third and loan. It was a critical play at that particular time, and uh, so there's a lot of big plays in this ball game. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, we needed every one of them because Bavard just kept uh, you had to give it to Bavard. They never backed down. They never quit, and they kept playing. And uh, you know you behind three touchdowns at halftime, and uh, but they just kept rambling back. We take a look at the first half highlights as the Eagles put up 40 points in the first 30 minutes. So Naboa on to kick off, left to right to the Eagles in their white jersey tops and blue pants. Jason Williams and Trey Sean Ward are back deep to return. Naboa puts this one a yard deep on the right side of the end zone. Straight ahead, breaks a move at the 25, still on his feet. He could go all the way. It's actually Lonnie Williams. Williams, 20, 10, see you later. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Split it right up the middle. And the Eagles return their first kickoff for a touchdown since 2009 in the playoffs at Grand Valley State. 6 nothing. So first down, 10 to go for the Eagles from the Brevard 41, 902 left in the first quarter. Eagles moving quickly. Pitch out right side, Hibbett has a blocker. Hibbett turns the corner, 30-20. Hibbett racing along the right sideline. He gets there, touchdown, Carson Newman. Andy Hibbett gives Carson Newman the lead again after a 41-yard touchdown run. The pitch set up perfectly around the right side of the line. Right under center, fakes the dive to Aulis, drops back to pass, looks over the middle of the field, and it's intercepted. Eric Kane jumped in front of the tight end. Cameron Martin down at the 30-yard line, and Kane snares the pick, the first interception of the season for Carson Newman, and it comes at a perfect time. Third down, six to go for the Eagles from the 33. Thomas takes the snap, pumps, and out and up to Ward. Has it at the 45. Ward keeps his feet, racing along the right sideline, deep into Brevard territory. 10-5, touchdown, Carson Newman. Treshawn Ward on the 67-yard catch and run has the Eagles with a chance to double up the Tornadoes once more, pending Ben Ogle's point after. Thomas comes down under center, takes the snap, fakes the dive to Freeman. He'll keep it right side. Thomas 10, Thomas 5, Thomas leaping for the end zone. Thomas, touchdown, Carson Newman. Got by Lunsford to get to the pylon, and DeAndre Thomas piles it on. 33-14, the Eagles up on Brevard with 10-20 left in the second quarter. Fullback Aulis, right, fakes the handoff to Aulis. The blitz comes, and right is swallowed up Hull. Evan Brown and David Way, both of them, chew them up, spit them out and leave the scraps for the rest of the defense. Thomas under center on second and seven. Eagles go a slant over the middle of the field. It's complete to Aaron Seward at the 10. Aaron Seward turns it up along the left hash mark. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Eagles drop a 40 spot in the first half off of Seward's 24 yard touchdown connection with DeAndre Thomas. Those are the first half highlights from Carson Newman's 41 point first half over Brevard. Uh, Ken, Brevard does manage to put up some points though. How much of that is on the Tornadoes and 
four seniors in their backfield. How much of that is on your defense? Well, they're veteran offense. There's no question about that. And, you know, and it's hard to prepare. We've got basically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practices to prepare for it. Um, uh, a lot of adjustments between what we'd been seeing and that. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a block low cut. Um, uh, come off the ball and hit you in the mouth. Uh, offense and uh, and we're uh, we're still playing a lot of guys that probably had never seen anything like that before. And uh, but uh, I thought we rallied and and uh, made a lot of plays. But uh, Bavard, uh, uh, they're going to score a lot of points on people this year. Yeah. And, um, you know, remember all they want to do is make three and a third yards. And uh, three and a third yards, uh, when, you're, uh, when you're running a 250-pound fullback, uh, you know, a 225-pound quarterback, it's not easy. When you think about that and uh, the, the fact, too, that you are still able to get some pressure in the backfield. Dion Meadows has a couple sacks. Uh, what did you do to generate that? Well, we we uh, uh, we actually uh, did the un the unthinkable. Uh, we actually blitzed them some, and um, it was kind of strange uh, how they started off. And I meant to ask Paul Hamilton, their coach, who does an unbelievable job. Uh, they ran to their right. Uh, the majority of the first half, if, if, if not all, but two or three plays. Uh, they ran a reverse back to their left once or twice. But the majority of the plays was to the right. And I meant to ask him if that meant that we, that he detected a flaw in us, or they just practiced it one way that week so that they'd be really good at it going that way, or, um, but, uh, they uh, and we misfitted. You know, you gotta fit on defense. You gotta have everybody come and fit where they're supposed to fit on defense. If not, then you leave a crease. If you leave a crease, and there's where there's where the balls will end up going. And so uh, we we missed some fits several times, and uh, we gotta get better at it. When we come back on the Ken Sparks show, we break down the second half. That's after this. Back on the Ken Spark Show as the Eagles improved to two and one and one and zero in the South Atlantic Conference with a 55-42 victory over the Brevard Tornadoes. Ken, uh, Jerry McLeese uh, stands out a 15 tackle game. It's the first 15 plus tackles by Carson Newman, defensive back since Mario Russell back in 2009. Uh, what was he doing to get downhill and get to the ball carrier? Well, of course, when uh, they had very little pass threat. Uh, and he had uh, definite assignments on the pitch. And just as soon as the option started, and he was coming downhill to the pitch. And so uh, uh, missed a tackle or two, but played, uh, considering that was his first start. Uh, uh, he's a good football player and going to get better, but he's, uh, uh, he hurts himself sometimes because he, he, he's on this. You know, he'll, uh, he'll see why he needs to play hard sometimes and sometimes he won't see it and uh but he's growing up and he'll be uh he's got he's got great days ahead of him i think game slowed down a bit in the second half really just five possessions offensively for your squad uh, what'd you do to weather the brevard storm while still sticking it in the end zone a couple times well the great thing of it was is that we answered almost every time that we needed to mm -hmm. When the offense went on the field after they scored, we scored. And so we kept everything in a, um, most of the time in a three touchdown uh, deal. And uh, the bad thing of it was uh, we weren't able to substitute offensively as early as we'd like to. We, we really got some young guys we need to get in a ball game. And, um, but with, uh, uh, with the ball game going vroom, vroom, vroom up and down the field, uh, we we needed to answer their scores 
and uh, not that those young guys can't do it. We just uh, at that time didn't feel like uh, that was uh, the way to find out if they could do it or not. And so uh, we, uh, uh, we're, we're grateful for how the offense responded. The offense was very, very confident and did a great job. We take a look at the second half highlights from Carson Newman's 55-42 win over the Tornadoes. Half of a flex bone with three wide receivers to the left. Right back to pass. Pressure comes and he's snared in the backfield. A sack along the left hash marks. Dion Meadows steamrolling through yet again. A loss of 10 back to the 34. Right under center. He is forced to lose the football by Austin Palmer. The Eagles pounce on it, and they have it. The line judge said the signaled Carson Newman ball. Javaris Neal picks it up and forces the second turnover of the day. Thomas takes the snap. He fakes the dive, rushes around the right side of the line, untouched. Touchdown, Carson Newman. DeAndre Thomas, the easy amble around the right side of the line to score from two yards out. Right takes the snap, runs left side, and great job by Eric Hilton shedding his blocker and then coming up from behind and dragging down right for a loss of two back to the 17. That was a big boy play. Three wide receivers, two to the wide side left, one to the short side right. Ward in motion. Delayed draw to Jones. Jones, a good head of steam across the 25-20. Jones inside the 10, and he's dragged down from behind by Juan Hicks. First and goal from the nine of Brevard for the Eagles. Trap right side, Hibbett. Hibbett blasting defenders to the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Andy Hibbett, the human bulldozer. Bangs his way in from nine yards out. And the Eagles have put half a hundred on Brevard. 54-35 with 9.47 left in the fourth quarter. Those are the second half highlights from Carson Newman's 55-42 win over Brevard. When we come back on the Ken Sparks Show, Michael Watrang puts our Eagles spotlight on Andy Hibbett. That's after this. Back on the Ken Sparks Show, each week we shine the Eagles spotlight on one Carson Newman football player and this week, Michael Watrang puts it on star running back Andy Hibbett. In the Kent Sparks era, the Eagles have had a plethora of options at the running back position. With just one ball, finding touches for all of those talented players has been difficult. Senior running back Andy Hibbett has waited his turn and is taking control of the Eagle backfield. When I got here as a freshman, um, Nate Inman was still here. Uh, he's a 3,000 yard rusher. And then I uh, played behind for the last two years. Um, Brandon Baker, who's also a 3,000 yard rusher, and Tyron Douglas, who I think missed 3,000 yards by 30 yards or so. So it's, it, and I, I wouldn't call myself the main guy. There's so many other guys on offense that are, that are so good. Um, but it's definitely, definitely been different, and I, I've enjoyed it. For the last three years, the Coryton, Tennessee native was the young guy of the group. This season, Hibbett has the entire stable looking up to him. Andy's definitely taking control of that group. Um, like, he's, like I heard him in his interview, he's, he's definitely learned from some good guys, but he also is, is taking his own spin on things. He's, he's on each other, each other all the time. He's, he's just really taking control of it. Pivot will be the first to admit it was not always easy being one of the complimentary running backs. The 2,000-yard rusher thinks his biggest challenge was waiting his turn. From my freshman year on high school, I started almost every game, except you know for a couple freshman year. So it was different coming in and probably not starting right off the bat. And I just had to humble myself in a sense, like, um, you know, you'll get your shot. You know, just keep working, um, keep building on what you're doing, watch the older guys. And I got to watch some great older guys play. Like I said, Nate, Tyron, Brandon Baker. So uh, they kind of instilled in me um, a good work ethic and how to run this offense the right way. As is the case with any player that suits up in Eagle colors, Hibbett's growth as a person is the most polarizing aspect people within the program realize. You know, it's funny, last night, uh, me and my wife and my son, we were, uh, were eating at Chick-fil-A, and Andy was right there with us, carrying, carrying Zane, and uh, it's just, that's the kind of guy, he just wants to hang out, wants to be with people, wants to carry a little seven-and-a-half-month-old boy, you know, and uh, so it's um, just fun to be around the guy. He's a leader. Um, does a good job of really just being sincere, trying to live a life for Christ, and uh, seen him in all aspects of life with, you know, being involved in FCA and being involved in, in taking this team, and uh, 
seeing spiritual growth and, and that's the biggest thing that's the reason i coach is to see guys walk closer with the lord and that's what andy's doing any athletic team is defined by the senior class the on-field goals for the 2014 version of carson newman football are obvious but Hibbett's hopes for the legacy of this unit extend beyond the gridiron. It not, not really um, anything on the football field. I just hope, you know, people remember the 2014 team as, uh, you know, a loving, caring team that, you know, supports the community, supports the school, um, you know, and, you know, that's probably, you know, keeps God first and gives God glory for everything they do. That's probably the, the main thing that I would, I would hope the 2014, you know, team you know, is remembered by you know not really what it says on the scoreboard but in but in life. Revez appreciates the growth and maturity he has seen from Hibbett this season. The second year running backs coach is excited for what he has done and what the future holds for yet another impressive tailback. For the Ken Sparks Show, I'm Michael Watrang. Thanks Michael and Ken Andy Hibbett continues uh, progression. Unbelievable. Uh, un unbelievable. Unbelievable and uh, he uh, He's just finding ways to to make plays for us, and uh, you know he's he's been a he's been a threat, and uh, I mean we're we're at the point where we don't want to take him off the field. He's a threat offensively. He's a threat with a kicking game, and uh, he's so dependable. And uh, you know he's uh, uh, he's just fun to he's fun to coach most of the time. Turn your attention now to the Catawba Indians who come off a big two overtime win mm -hmm. at Newberry, 37-33. Yeah. What stands out to you about that club? Well, they uh, had a coaching change last year and uh, uh, had a new emphasis on defense, I think, and uh, came in here and beat us. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, they're going to be on a roll uh, uh, you know, we, I think they're two and one. Uh, they've only lost to a Division One team, uh, a double overtime victory at Newberry. Uh, any kind of a victory at Newberry, but a double overtime victory at Newberry. I'm sure they're feeling pretty confident and pretty good about themselves. So uh, we got our hands full. Ken, pleasure as always. Thanks for the time. Thanks. 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 Carson Newman head football coach Ken Sparks. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Ken Sparks Show. Thanks for watching.